Paradise Lost by John Milton Book on Vargument This first book proposes, first in brief, the whole subject, man's disobedience, and the loss thereupon of paradise wherein he was placed, then touches the prime cause of his fall, the serpent, or rather Satan in the serpent, who, revolting from God and drawing to his side many legions of angels, was by the command of God driven out of heaven with all his crew into the great deep, which action passed over, the poem hasts into the midst of things, presenting Satan with his angels, no fallen into hell, described here not in the centre, for heaven and earth may be supposed as yet not mad, certainly not yet accursed, but in a place of utter darkness, fitly is called chaos. Here Satan with his angels, laying on the burning lake, thunderstruck and astonished, after a certain space, recovers as from confusion, calls up him who next in order and dignity lay by him. They confer of their miserable fall. Satan awakens all his legions who lay till then in the same manner confounded. Their rays, their numbers, a ray of battle, their chief leaders named according to the idols known afterwards in Canaan and the countries adjoining. To this Satan directs his speech comforts them with hope yet of regaining heaven, but tells them lastly of a new world, a new kind of creature to be created according to an ancient prophecy or report in heaven. For that angels were long before this visible creation was the opinion of many ancient fathers. To find out the truth of this prophecy and what to determine thereon, he refers to a full council, what his associates then attempt. Pandemonium, the palace of Saturn, Rises, suddenly built out of the deep. The infernal peers there sit in council. Of man's first disobedience, and the fruit of that forbidden tree, whose mortal task brought death into the world, and all our woe with loss of Eden, till one greater man restore us and regain the blissful state, Sing, heavenly muse, that on the sacred top of Oreb or of Sinai didst inspire that shepherd, who first taught the chosen seed in the beginning how the heavens and earth rose out of chaos. Or if Sion Hill delight thee more, and Silos broke that flowed fast by the oracle of God, I thence invoke thy aid to me adventurous song, that with no middle flight intends to soar above the Onian mount, while it pursues things unattempted yet in prose or rhyme. And chiefly thou, O spirit, that dost prefer before all temples the bright heart and pure, instruct me. For thou knowest, thou from the first wast present, and with mighty wings outspread, dove-like sat brooding on the vast abyss, and mad stood pregnant. What in me is dark illumine, what is low, raise and support. That to the aid of this great argument, I may assert eternal providence and justify the ways of God to men. Say first, for heaven hides nothing from thy view, nor the deep tract of hell. Say first, what cause moved our grand parents in that happy state favored of heaven so highly to fall off from their creator and transgress his will for own restraint, lords of the world besides? who first seduced them to that foul revolt. The infernal serpent, he it was whose guiles stirred up with envy and revenge, they saved the mother of mankind, what time his pride had cast him out from heaven with all his host of rebel angels, by whose aid aspiring to set himself in glory above his peers, he trusted to have equaled the most high if he opposed. And with ambitious aim against the throne and monarchy of God, raised impious war in heaven and battle proud with vain attempt. Him the almighty power hurled headlong, flaming from the ethereal sky, with hideous ruin and combustion down to bottomless perdition, there to dwell in adamant in chains and penal fire, who durst defy the omnipotent to arms. Nine times the space that measures day and night to mortal men he with his horrid crew left vanquished, rolling in the fiery gulf confounded though immortal. But his doom reserved him to more wrath, 
For no the thought both of lost happiness and lasting pain torments him. The round he throws his baleful eyes that witnessed huge affliction and dismay mixed with obdurate pride and steadfast head. At once as far as angels can he views the dismal situation. Wast and wild, a dungeon horrible on all sides around as own great furnace flamed. Yet from those flames no light but rather darkness visible served only to discover sights of woe. Regions of sorrow, doleful sheds where peace and rest can never dwell, hope never comes that comes to all. But torture without end still urges, and a fiery deluge, fed with ever burning sulphur unconsumed, such place eternal justice had prepared for those rebellious. Here, their prisoner damned in utter darkness, and their portion set as far removed from God and light of heaven as from the center thrice to that most pole. Oh, how unlike the place from whence there fell. There, the companions of his fall, o'erwhelmed with floods and whirlwinds of tempestuous fire, he soon discerns, and weltering by his side, oh, next himself in power, and next in crime, long after Knoon in Palestine and named Beelzebub, to whom the arch enemy and thence in heaven called Satan, with bold words break in the horrid silence, thus began. If thou beest he, but who, O fawn, thou changed from him who in the happier realms of light, clothed with transcendent brightness, didst thou shine myriads though bright? If he who milled to a leg, united thoughts and counsels, equal hope and hazard in the glorious enterprise, joined with me once, now misery hath joined in equal ruin. Into what pit thou seest, from what hath fallen, so much the stronger proved he with his thunder. Until then, who knew the force of those dire arms? In not for those, nor what the potent victor in his rage can else inflict do I repent or change, though changed in outward luster. That fixed mind and I disdain from sense of injured merit, that with the mightiest raised me to contend, and to the fair's contention brought along innumerable force of spirits iron, that does dislike his reign, and me preferring his utmost power with adverse power opposed in dubious battle on the plains of heaven, and shook his throne! But though the field be lost, all is not lost. The unconquerable will and study of revenge, immortal heart and courage never to submit or yield. And what is else not to be overcome? That glory never shall his wrath or might extort from me to bow and sink for grass with suppliant knee and deify his power who from the terror of this arm so lad doubted his empire? That were low indeed. That were an ignominy and sham beneath this downfall, since befad the strength of gods and this imperial substance cannot fail. Since through experience of this great event in arms not worse, in foresight much advanced, we may with more successful hope resolve to wage by force or gale. Eternal war irreconcilable to our grand foe, who no triumphs, and in excess of joy soul reigning, holds the tyranny of heaven. So spake the postet angel, who in pain, vaunting aloud, but racked with deep despair, and him thus answered soon his bold compeer. O prince, O chief of many throned powers that led in battled seraphim to war under thy conduct, and in dreadful deeds fearless endangered heaven's perpetual king, and put to proof his high supremacy, whether upheld by strength or chance or fate, to well I see and you the dire event that with sad overthrow and foul defeat hath lost us heaven, and all this mighty host in horrible destruction laid thus low as far as gods and heavenly essences can perish, for the mind and spirit remains invincible, and vigor soon returns, though all our glory extinct, and happy stead here swallowed up in endless misery. But what if he, our conqueror, 
whom I know of force believe almighty, since no less than such could have o'erpowered such force as ours, have left us this our spirit and strength entire, strongly to suffer and support our pains, that we may so suffice his vengeful ire, or do him mightier service as his thralls by right of war, whate'er his business be here in the heart of hell to work in fire, or do his errands in the gloomy deep. What can it then avail, though yet we feel strength undiminished, or eternal being to undergo eternal punishment?'